Hello. Today, I would like to tell you about how to increase your chances of having a healthy pregnancy and a healthy child based on the recommendations of the Healthy Child Guide from the Neurologic Health Foundation. My name is Dr. Richard Fry. I am the Chief of Neurodevelopmental Disorders at Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Director of the Autism Program. One thing I've learned is that it's easier to prevent neurodevelopmental disorders than to treat them. So today I'd like to tell you about prevention, how to prevent neurodevelopmental disorders and other chronic health conditions of childhood. The mission and purpose of the Neurological Health Foundation is to empower parents to have healthy pregnancies and healthy children that are free of chronic health conditions. The Neurological Health Foundation has selected an excellent group of physicians, nutritionists, and researchers to create the Healthy Guide. I am proud to have worked with them. Today, approximately 30% of children, that's one in three, in the United States suffers from a serious neurologic, developmental, psychiatric, or physical health problem that is chronic. This includes attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, autism, learning disabilities, asthma, cerebral palsy, cancer, and other serious medical conditions. In the past 20 years, there's been a substantial increase in these health conditions. There has also been an increase in pregnancy complications. This includes infertility in men and women, problems with the pregnancy, including miscarriages and preterm birth, and birth defects. The number of children with autism has substantially increased over the past three decades. It has increased by 600% in the last two decades. It is at an all-time high, affecting almost 2% of children. The Healthy Child Guide provides a set of 17 key recommendations based on over 150 scientific studies. It will inform you how to reduce the risk of having uh, pregnancy complications and birth complications, reduce the risk of many chronic medical and physical health conditions developing in your child, and it will provide a guide of how to improve your child's growth and development. The Healthy Child Guide provides 17 key recommendations that focus on improving nutrition, decreasing toxic exposures, improving medical care, exercise, and stress reduction. The Healthy Child Guide recommends seven tips before you conceive. You should improve your diet and nutrition. Take quality prenatal supplements even before you're pregnant. Reduce toxic exposures. Make sure you obtain routine medical care to optimize your health. Reduce stress and make sure you maintain appropriate exercise. Wait 18 months between pregnancies and wait three months after you stop oral contraception to conceive. There are also important recommendations for men during the preconception period, and these recommendations should be followed to increase the quality of sperm, enhance sperm mobility, and reduce the risk of DNA damage to the genetic material in the sperm. These recommendations are particularly important for men who are 40 years of age and older. The following can interfere with male fertility, being older than 35, exposure to toxic metals, exposure to harmful chemicals, tobacco smoking, alcohol consumption, recreational use of certain drugs, soy consumption, overheating the gonad area. Other major recommendations for men include a balanced organic diet, a wide variety of protein, vegetables, and fruits in the diet, low mercury seafood, healthy oils and fats, purified water, and a balanced vitamin and mineral supplement. The Healthy Child Guide includes seven tips for pregnancy after you conceive. This includes to continue a healthy diet, reduce risk to toxic exposures, continue to obtain routine medical care, reduce stress, continue to exercise within limits, strive for a full-term 40-week pregnancy, and prepare for breastfeeding after the child is born. Diet and nutrition is of the utmost importance during pregnancy. 
meal should be balanced with 50% vegetables, 25% protein, and 25% fruits or starches. 75 grams of protein should be consumed per day during the first trimester and 90 grams of protein per day during the second and third trimesters. You should eat seven servings per day of fruits and vegetables. In general, one serving of fruits and vegetables is a half a cup, except for lettuce and leafy green vegetables, where a whole cup is one serving. We recommend 8 to 12 ounces of low mercury seafood per week that is wild and not farm-raised. Clean water is essential. Tap water should be purified with a charcoal filter or you should drink uncontaminated spring water. We recommend making foods at home from scratch using whole organic food ingredients. A high fiber diet is important and you should eat 25 grams per day of fiber to reduce the risk of constipation. We also recommend eating organic as much as possible to avoid harmful conventional pesticides and herbicides and to wa wash non-organic food thoroughly. We recommend avoiding alcohol, fish with high mercury content such as shark and swordfish or fish with moderate mercury content such as tuna. Avoid aspartame and monosodium glutamate and its derivatives, which are flavor enhancer, which have no nutritional benefits. Avoid eating the fish skin, raw and uncooked meat, or seafood. Fats in non-organic meat, as the fats tend to accumulate toxins. Avoid charred, blackened, or burned food. Hydrogenated fat, partially hydrogenated fats and trans fats, unpasteurized foods. Try to avoid soy and tofu, refined sugars, food with high glycemic index, such as refined grains and breads, pastas, cold cereals, crackers, and pretzels. Avoid sodas and diet sodas. Avoid ingestion of excessive caffeine. For those that do drink coffee, don't drink more than three cups. For those that drink tea, do not drink more than five cups per day. Avoid highly processed foods, deli meats, artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, and preservatives, and genetically modified foods. There are many scientific studies that are behind our recommendations. Here are a few. In one study, a Mediterranean diet during pregnancy was shown to be protective against asthma-like symptoms and hyperallergenic disease in children. Consumption of seafood in another study above the recommended amount of 340 grams per week was associated with higher neuropsychological scores, higher cognitive scores, and lower scores on a test for childhood Asperger disorder. Of course, it's important to eat seafood that is low in mercury as previously suggested. In one study of 1,139 children, higher urinary concentrations of organic phosphate met metabolites were strongly associated with ADHD. This is one of the reasons we recommend to avoid foods that may have toxins and to eat organic. Prenatal supplements are of the utmost importance. It's important to take a very high quality prenatal supplement and to start before pregnancy in the preconception period in order to prepare your body for pregnancy. Prenatal supplements are essential for human health. Prenatal supplements help with brain development which occurs primarily before 12 weeks of gestation, sometimes before you know you are even pregnant. This is why we recommend that prenatal supplements be taken during the preconception period to prepare your body and also to make sure there are prenatal supplements on board when you are pregnant. 
the nutritional needs during pregnancy increase dramatically and that's why it is important to take your prenatal supplements. Not all prenatal supplements are equal. It's important to select a vitamin that has adequate doses of important vitamins and minerals. We recommend adding omega-3 fatty acids and probiotics in addition to your standard prenatal supplements. And it's important to test iron, vitamin D, homocysteine, and thyroid throughout the pregnancy. We recommend many vitamins at adequate levels for pregnancy in order to support the fetus. Here is a list of some of the vitamins, including vitamin A, C, D, E, and K. This also includes many of the B vitamins, including thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, and vitamin B12. Biotin and panathoic acid are also important. Their doses are listed here. Many minerals are also important, including calcium, iron, iodine, magnesium, zinc, selenium, copper, manganese, chromium, molybdenum, potassium, choline, inositol, and DHA. Again, there are many scientific studies supporting our recommendations. We know that prenatal folic acid supplementation around conception, including before conception in the preconception period, is associated with a 39% lower risk of having a child with autism. In males, vitamin D supplementation of at least 2,000 international units per day during the first year of life reduces the risk of developing schizophrenia. In another study, chronic iron deficiency in infancy was associated with lower mental and motor function. Even though some of these studies are in children, the nutrition during pregnancy is what prepares the child's body to have adequate vitamins and minerals for their life. It's also important for the mother to have adequate nutrition and breastfeed. And since the child will be getting their nutrition from breast milk, it's important for the mother to have adequate nutrition. And this needs to start before pregnancy even occurs. It is known that many common toxins that we can be exposed to can interfere with health and neurodevelopment. Thus, it's important to try to eliminate or minimize exposures to these toxins in order to optimize the outcomes of the pregnancy. There are many studies that show that exposure to toxic chemicals are dangerous to the fetus during pregnancy and can result in health effects and neurodevelopmental disorders. In one landmark study, it was found that over 287 toxins were found in the newborn's umbilical cord blood. These toxins included carcinogens, neurotoxins, and developmental toxins. All of these can affect the baby's growth and development. And it's important to realize that these were actually reaching the fetus before it was born. This is one of the reasons why it's critical to reduce exposure to toxins during pregnancy and even before pregnancy. Here are some general recommendations for avoiding exposure to toxins. It's important to avoid alcohol, smoking, and recreational drugs. Avoid toxic chemicals in your environment. Pesticides should be used outside the home. Certain paints, stains, and varnishes when used should be low volatile organic chemicals. Avoid gasoline and similar crude oil products. Avoid new plastics. These emit chemicals that are hazardous and these new plastics can be found in new floorings, cushions, shower curtains, and styrofoam, including coffee cups and takeout containers. 
avoid asbestos, stain guards, and other chemical exposures. Here are some recommendations for home cleaning. Make sure you air out your house at least once a week for several hours. Use a HEPA filter at home. Use house plants, which can help purify air. When selecting cleaning products, check the EWG website at www.ewg.org for suggestions of safe products to use. This includes making do-it-yourself recipes that are less expensive and less toxic. Dust and vacuum regularly with a HEPA filter vacuum. When selecting lighting, avoid compact fluorescent light bulbs because when they break, they can release mercury into the home. Limit exposure to electromagnetic fields, including Wi-Fi devices and cell phones and laptops. There are also important recommendations for food preparation, personal care, and pet care. For water, drink purified water that's been purified through a high-end filter. Alternatively, obtain water from an uncontaminated spring. Most cities have a distributor that has a spring water that's been derived from an uncontaminated spring. It's important that the water be in glass jugs, as plastic jugs can contain toxins. Avoid microwaving and heating foods in plastics. For cookware, avoid Teflon cookware or cookware with nonstick coatings. Avoid aluminum cookware. Some good alternatives are stainless steel, cast iron, glass, ceramic, porcelain, or enamel cookware. Avoid canned foods. Make sure to buy organic, fresh, or frozen products. When storing food, store them in glass or ceramic containers that are airtight. Avoid plastic containers, plastic baggies, and plastic wrap. Eat organic as much as possible to avoid consuming pesticides and herbicides in non-organic food. If eating conventional non-organic produce, make sure to wash it well and peel the skin before eating it. For personal care products, use natural organic and toxin-free cosmetics. This includes sunscreens, hair and nail products, antiperspirant, when dry cleaning, and when using fragrances. Avoid antibacterial soap and hand sanitizers. For pet care, use natural flea collars and shampoos. And avoid contact with cat litter boxes or dog stool. Many toxins and toxicants can disrupt the body's metabolism through the endocrine system. Here is a diagram of how complicated and interconnected the endocrine system is. Small disruptions in any part of this system can cause significant changes. Here are eight ways to avoid endocrine and hormonal disruptions. Whenever possible, store food and drinks in glass containers in both the pantry and fridge instead of plastic containers. When using the microwave, heat foods and liquids only in microwave-safe glass or ceramic containers and avoid plastics regardless of what the package recommends. Avoid non-stick cookware. When using the dishwasher, use phosphate-free and fragrant-free detergents. For hand washing and general household cleaning, avoid antibacterial products. Use eco-friendly products and consider non-toxic ingredients 
such as Castile soap, lemon, vinegar, or basic soap and water. Choose meats that are fresh, organic grass-fed animals without antibiotics or grown with hormones. Keep in mind conventionally raised non-organic animals store toxins in their fat and this is one of the reasons why we recommend to avoid fats in non-organic animal products. All organic foods have a much greater possibility of being hormone free and free of hormonal disrupting chemicals. Avoid canned foods and canned drinks as these containers are lined with BPA many times, which is an endocrine and hormonal disruptor. Here is some of the science behind our recommendations. In one study, it was found that mothers that live near insecticide applications during pregnancy had a 60% increase in the risk of having a child with autism. In another study, it was found that metabolites of pesticides used in genetically modified food cross the placenta and reach the fetus and were found in every umbilical cord sample tested. In another study, it's been found that toxic air pollutants, pesticides, and consumer products can disrupt the prostaglandin E2 pathway, which is crucial for brain development. It is important to have optimal health before, during, and after pregnancy. Thus, we recommend routine medical care to optimize your health. Start to optimize your health during the preconception period. Discuss all medications with your care provider during both the prenatal and preconception period. Eliminate all unnecessary medications and maintain the lowest dose of needed medications. Limit the use of over-counter medications including acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and naproxen. In preparation for pregnancy, have a gynecological exam and test for HPV, CMV, and group B strep. Check your medications with your gynecologist. Consider important blood tests like testing your iron levels, homocysteine levels, and thyroid levels. If homocysteine is abnormal, consider folinic acid and B12. Consider taking a probiotic regularly. Consult a nutritionist to improve your diet. If at high risk for any disorders, make sure you consider additional testing to optimize your health. During pregnancy, it's important to maintain your health in an optimal fashion. Continue, continue routine dental care but avoid placement or removal of mercury or silver fillings or root canal. Minimize the use of anesthesia. And if antibiotics are needed, discuss which are appropriate for pregnancy. Make sure you maintain good medical care during pregnancy. Attend to all prenatal visits. Check medications with your prenatal provider and consider discontinuing unnecessary medications or using the lowest acceptable dose. Attend childbirth classes and consider natural childbirth. Make sure you keep a close eye on iron status, especially in the third trimester when 40% of women are found to become anemic. And consider testing for birth defects and birth abnormalities. Here is some of the science behind our recommendations. In one study, biomarkers on the quad screen test were associated with preterm birth, preeclampsia, and fetal loss. 
Newborn screening provides early diagnosis for treatable conditions that require treatments at birth to optimize health. In one study, it was found that adequate prenatal care reduces the probability of postpartum hospitalization among women that have had a vaginal delivery. It is important to maintain an adequate and safe exercise program throughout pregnancy in order to keep your health optimal. There are many benefits that have been found from exercise during pregnancy. Exercise during pregnancy can improve cardiorespiratory fitness, maintain healthy weight, alleviate common discomforts that occur during pregnancy, including backaches, constipation, and varicose veins. Exercise has been shown to prevent gestational diabetes and preeclampsia. It also reduces stress and improves the quality of your sleep. Exercise will increase oxygen delivery to the fetal brain and may increase the IQ of the child. Maintaining adequate exercise through pregnancy can also improve labor and delivery. Here are some recommendations for safe exercise during pregnancy. Safe exercises include walking, yoga, swimming, aqua aerobics, rowing, stationary bicycle, stretching, strength training with light weights with more repetition is acceptable, but heavy weight lifting should be avoided. There are, there are activities to avoid during pregnancy. Avoid physical activities that force you to lie flat on your back. Avoid contact sports and activities that pose a high risk of falling. Avoid outdoor cycling, downhill skiing, gymnastics, and horseback riding. And only participate in tennis moderately and only if you have done this before pregnancy. One literature review summarized many of the benefits of exercise during pregnancy for both the mother and fetus. For the mother, exercise improves cardiovascular function, limits weight gain, decreases physical discomforts, reduces cramps and edema, increases mood stability, and reduces the incidence of diabetes and hypertension. For the fetus, it appears to decrease fat mass, improve stress tolerance, and advance neurobehavioral maturation. One study has shown that exercise can reduce gestational diabetes. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation of the Healthy Child Guide. We believe the recommendations of the Healthy Child Guide will help you have a healthier pregnancy and a healthier child. We recommend that you download the Healthy Child Guide and keep it with you to refer to throughout your pregnancy. We recommend you follow its recommendations. In the Healthy Child Guide, there are several checklists to help you as you go through the many recommendations. We suggest you read it several times. Share it with your friends and family. You can also join the Neurological Health Foundation community, which has access to resources, including the Pregnancy Kitchen, that will help you create healthy meal plans. We recommend that you go to the Neurological Health Foundation website at www.neurologicalhealth.com. Org. There are three main areas. One is the guide that we have reviewed today. You can download this and refer to it. The second is joining the Neurological Health Foundation community, which will give you access to more resources. Third is downloading the Neurological Health Foundation research, which has studies that support all the recommendations that we've made.